Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. I'm trying to discuss uh, a video on basically inverse hyperbolic trig functions and show how you could write them as logarithms. And this would be useful for derivatives later on. And in this video, I'm going to go over inverse hyperbolic sine of x and basically show that it could be written as a logarithm, which equals to ln or natural log of x plus square root x squared plus 1. And the domain is x is all real numbers. So that's what I'm going to show right here. And also I've gone over hyperbolic functions and inverse functions uh, and other trig functions and, and earlier before and you could see all those videos in the related videos below. And now um, I have here graphed out all these uh, basically three functions. The first one, this one is just uh, this is just uh, cinch or hyperbolic sine of x, not the inverse of it. And this basically, this is by definition equals to e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by 2. And that's the blue one right here. The red is the y equals x line. And as I showed in my earlier videos, basically inverse functions, the inverse of, of, its fu of a function is the mirror image reflected about the y equals x line right here. So as you can see, this is switched over here and as, et cetera. So it, uh, this orange one is the inverse um, inverse hyperbolic sine of x right here. That is this this function right here with just with it graphed out. But I wrote it as lawn. This one here is what I'm going to show. The reason is just because uh, Google Graph and Calculator, uh, I tried writing arc inverse, uh, our arc sine h or arc hyperbolic sine of x. It wasn't graphing it, so I just put this in. I don't know why it wasn't graphing it. You could try Wolfram or your calculator that would do it. But anyways, it looks something like this. I just wanted to show it because this shows that the domain is basically x is all real numbers right here. And that's because x could be anything all the way to the right and anything all the way to the left. And y, there's no restrictions as well in this. Like, uh, so make sure to watch my earlier videos to understand why this is important, basically, because we need to make it sure it's a one to one function. Uh, and you can see those in related videos below. So, anyways, now that we know that x is all real numbers, we can go ahead proving this case right here. So, uh, if we let, let's say, y is equal to inverse hyperbolic sine of x or inverse cinch. This is the exact same thing as writing it as yeah, as x equals to a hyperbolic sine of x right here. I mean of y. Yeah, I mean y. I always get that mixed up. So basically this is all inverse function is. It's just you replace the x and y and now you have to solve for y right here. So, but in this one we use the definition. If we use it we'll get x is equal to e to the y minus e to the negative y divided by 2. This is by definition of hyperbolic sine, but now in terms of y instead of x. So now we have to try to solve for this. We can multiply this 2 out. So uh, yeah, multiply the 2 out, we'll get 2x is equal to e to the y minus e to the negative y. So right now what I'm going to do is subtract this on this side. I'll show you why in a bit we'll get e, I mean 0 is equal to e to the y minus 2x minus e to the negative uh, y right here. And now what I'm going to do is multiply or, or basically square, I mean yeah, I, I mean multiply both sides by e to the y. I'll show you why. So we multiply both sides e to the y, the left side obviously going to be 0. So we'll have 0 is equal to e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y minus uh, this is going to be e to the, uh, basically these are the same powers right here. I'll just write this down, e to the y, e to, e to negative y, and e to the y. This, so on this side right here, we're going to get um, e to the negative y plus y equals e to the 0, which equals to 1. So we add the powers equals to 1. And now this, we could uh, take this out. So we'll have e, 0 is equal to e to the y, I'll just write it like this, just so you have an idea that it will look exactly like a quadratic formula. So now I'll have 2 to the x times by e to the y minus 1 right here. And now this is a quadratic formula, and we could actually solve for e to the y uh, using the quadratic formula right here. So this is a quadratic equation, I'll just write quadratic formula. Uh, basically, but now instead of using x, we use this e to the y right here. 
So if we have, I'll just write, if we have zero is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, then x is equal to uh, negative, yeah, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. You can see proof of this in the video link below. But now we're dealing with this e to the y right here. So in this case, we're going to be, instead of using x, we use e to the y. And now our b is equal to, actually, first, first let's put our a. So our a is equal to, well, there's nothing in front of this e to the y. So this is 1, b is equal to this negative 2x. Our c is just equal to negative 1 is equal to c. So now we just plug that in. So we'll get e to the y is equal to negative times negative 2x. So 2x plus or minus square root b squared. That's going to be 4x squared. This is just squaring this. It will become positive. So now minus 4 times 1 times negative 1. So I'll just put a plus here. So that's a 4ac, so negative 1 and 1. And this is all divided by 2. So now this this is a, we could take this like term out, this 4. So this 4, because we could just put it as 4x squared plus 1, factor it out, all square root. And then basically 4 squared, uh, square root is 2. So this equals to 2 square root x squared plus 1. So we could write that out. So we'll, we'll be left with x plus or minus 2 square root x squared plus 1 all divided by 2. Now the 2's all cancel, just divide it out. And we'll be left with e to the y is equal to x plus or minus square root x squared plus 1. And yes, yeah, divided by 2's cancel, so we're just we're left with this. But now we know that e to the y is, well, greater than 0 right here. Greater uh, yeah, than 0 because it's an uh, exponential function. If you plug in e to the negative 99, it's still going to be positive because this is just to the power of it, so it will never be, yeah, so it will always be positive. And basically, if you saw a graph it, it would look something like this. So an exponential function looks something like this. And it's always, so this is e to the y, or if this is y, so this is y. So this is always going to be greater than 0, and this looks like that. So if it's always greater than 0, and we know that this x squared plus 1, this is basically this is always going to be bigger than this x, because whatever x is, uh, let's say 2, you're going to have, this is going to be 2 to the f be 4, and then we're always adding this 1. So always adding a 1. So x is less than square root x squared plus 1. So if we're subtracting something bigger, we're going to get a negative number right here. So we cannot use this negative right here. So we can't use this one. Let's put an x on it. Or actually, the x looks like our x. So anyways, we can't use it, so we only pick the plus. So basically, we'll have e to the y is the only one that's going to uh, make sense, is the plus. The other one it does not match the, the function. And then this is going to be e to the y equals x plus square root x squared plus 1. And now we have this, and now we could, if we ln both sides, or take the log both sides, we'll use ln in this case. Because we can do this to both sides because we're not affecting anything. So we do this to both sides and now we could use our log rules and the y goes down so and then basically ln e is cancelled. So it would be y ln e basically this equals to one. Because we take the y down equals to ln x plus square root x squared plus one. And this is our answer basically I'll just uh, get rid of this ln e. So basically we have y is equal to ln x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And we've shown that basically x is an element of all real numbers right here initially. So this is our final answer. And that's a check mark for it. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this video proof of uh, to write inverse um, hyperbolic functions as logarithms. And it'll be easier for derivatives later on. Anyways, thanks for watching. You download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below and stay tuned for another math easy solution.